But this is uh, absolutely a game changer for me. Hey everybody, Barrett here with Spec of Tech. Welcome to the channel. Today's video is actually a video that I was reluctant to make at first. Until I got my hands on the product and started using the product for myself, I didn't really understand the convenience of it until I did that. The product we're talking about today is the Sofa Baton X1S Universal Remote Control. This little remote right here really does replace all of your other remotes for your home theater. Even if you're using something like an Xbox for your media player, the Xbox does have an IR receiver on it and they do have remote controls for the Xbox. So if you are using that for your streaming device, this can even replace an Xbox controller. The reason I was reluctant is because I'm a person that doesn't really mind having some remotes on my armrest beside me for each device that I'm gonna be using, depending on whether I'm watching a movie or if I'm playing games or whatever. I didn't mind having those remotes next to me until I actually used this remote and learned how convenient and how easy it is to just have one remote versus having three remotes around you or having one on your chest and two in the cup holders. This really is easy to use. So after I experienced the convenience of just using the remote and setting it up with the app on my phone, I thought to myself, well, how much more convenient would it be if I got the app on a tablet, which I use my uh, tablet holder here that I got from Valencia Home Theater Seating, which just attaches to the mechanism on my armrest here. And then I downloaded the Sofa Baton app onto the tablet. I can now control everything on my home theater from the tablet itself. Uh, it gives you a nice display of all the buttons so it's easy to figure out what you need to do. Uh, but if you don't want to use that, you can always just use this remote as well. But for those of you out there that are interested in having your home theater controlled by your tablet, we're gonna talk about that today and I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. But first things first, let's talk about what the Sofa Baton X1S comes with in the box. So obviously you get the remote itself. You also get the hub. And yes, you do have to use the hub with this remote. So it does have its own power supply that comes in the box as well. You plug that in and then your remote communicates with that hub and that's how you control everything. Sofa Baton does have an app that's available on iOS and Android. So once you install that app, it does simplify the setup process. And then the hub is the one that communicates with the remote and syncs with the remote and updates the remote. Once you've uh, added your devices onto the hub itself, it'll sync that to the remote. So you do need the hub. It does have to use the hub. But for those of you that want an IR blaster on the remote itself, then you're gonna have to go with the Sofa Baton U2 and not the X1S. But this one is their more advanced or their top tier model. The hub itself does have the IR blaster in it. So like I said, the remote doesn't have it, but the hub does. And it kind of has like a shotgun uh, IR blaster. It has a, a very powerful IR blaster in it, but you still have to have line of sight to the device for it to work. So if you're if you're wanting it to operate your TV, but you have it in a corner and your uh, TV receiver or IR receiver isn't in line of sight of that blaster, well, then it's not going to work. So in the box, they do include uh, some other IR blasters that you can plug into the back of the hub. So one of them has two IR blasters attached to the one cable, and the other one is just a single IR blaster attached to the cable, which I installed into my home theater rack so that I could get a better signal to some of my other devices. The hub did work uh, sometimes, but I kind of had to have it pulled out a little bit so that the IR uh, signal could get sent to my other devices. But for those of you out there that are gonna use the uh, hub on top of your media center or on top of something to where it's gonna have line of sight to all your devices, you're only gonna need to use the hub. You won't even have to use uh, the infrared blasters that you can attach into the back. But the remote itself also does have Bluetooth connectivity. So if you have a Bluetooth remote, this remote will work with Bluetooth as well. But that's all that's included in the box, but it was really nice to see that they included some extra IR blasters in case you were running into some difficulty like I was, but now there's no difficulties, everything works just great. So let's dive onto my phone and I'll show you guys the app and how to program things. It is very simple, it's very easy to use. This app is very user-friendly. Uh, I think pretty much anybody is gonna be able to use this app. And it's the same app that I've downloaded onto my tablet so I can control my whole home theater. So let's have a look at it. So to download the Sofa Baton app, it's really simple. Go to the iOS store, the Google Play store, and in the search function, just type in Sofa Baton, it's gonna pop up. Install that app and it's very simple. And then it's gonna walk you through the setup of the hub. Again, very simple. You're just gonna connect it to your Wi-Fi network by typing in the password. So when I first set mine up, it took about five or 10 minutes before the hub actually showed up on the app itself. So give it a little bit of time, it will show up. And then once it shows up, you're gonna see a screen like this, except you're not gonna see all the devices that I already have listed here. You're just gonna see a blank screen. But if you do wanna add a device, you simply hit the plus sign in the top right hand corner, and then you're gonna select what type of remote you want to add, whether it's infrared or Bluetooth. So let's say for instance, we wanted to add the remote for my Panasonic UB820 Blu-ray player. So you'd simply just hit that, and then you can either scroll through and try and find it if you want, or you can just search for it by hitting the search function there. 
and I'm just going to type in Panasonic. And then you can see that it popped up right here. So I can just click on Panasonic. So you can just click on the search function here and I'm just going to type in 820. And there it is, the DPUB820 DVD Blu-ray player. So I'm going to select that. And as you can see, these are the buttons that are already programmed or pre-programmed in there. So you can hit the trigger button and that's gonna tell you whether or not that it actually triggers your device, but I've already added this device so I know that they work. So there's no need for me to test them. So I'm just gonna hit next. And then you're gonna be able to select your icon. So whatever icon you wanna select here. I do wish that they had a, a lot more selection for icons, but this is what you have. So I'm gonna click that box there and then I'm gonna type in Panasonic UB820 and then I'm gonna hit complete. And then you're gonna to have to wait for this to download. It is gonna take a minute or two to download all of those functions onto the hub. And then once the hub has downloaded them, then it's gonna to sync to the remote. Okay, and then now that it's configured, you can just hit complete. And now you're gonna see that device added to my list. So you can see I already added the Panasonic up above. So here I, I label it the Panasonic UB820. And then if you want to be able to include this device in the activities, you'll see on the top here, it says before creating an activity, you need to complete the device's power settings. So click on that. So if you want it to turn off when it's not being used in an activity, uh, for instance, if you trigger an activity and the UB820 is not one of the devices that's used in that activity, it'll power it off. So let's leave it as that. We're gonna leave it as turn off when it's not in use. And then we're gonna hit next. So here it gives you the option of what type of power on and off it is. For example, my Anthem AVM90 has a power on button and a power off button that is separate. Uh, in this case, the uh, Panasonic UBA20 does not. It has only one button for that. So we'll leave it on only a power key and then hit next. So then for power on off sequence, you're just gonna to wanna to hit the power on button. And of course you can test that by hitting the test button but I already know that that works. And then if you wanna change the delay, so here it says immediately. So if you just click on that word immediately, then you can just adjust it from here. You can see that it, you can hold up to five seconds or 0 0.5 seconds. I'm just gonna leave it as immediately and hit confirm. And then you're gonna to wanna to hit complete. And once you've configured the on and off sequences, now you can use that device in activities. Let's just close that down. So let's say for an example that one of the buttons that you wanted to program aren't in this list. So if you go to edit, and add a repair commands. So here's where you have all of the commands and then you can add one. Let's say I wanted to add one for play. Let's say there wasn't a play function on there. So let's hit the play, play function and then you hit next and then it's gonna be an IR function because the remote is an IR, so you hit IR. Then you're gonna to wanna to aim the original Panasonic remote at a little round dot on the hub itself and press the play button and it's gonna instantly learn it like you see here. But let's say you want to assign commands on the remote because the sofa baton remote does have a certain amount of buttons on the front. So you can hit assign commands and then you're gonna see a list of all of the buttons that the sofa baton remote has. You're gonna see which ones are configured in blue and what they're configured with. And then you're gonna see the ones that aren't configured. So for instance, here you have the plus and minus buttons that aren't configured. If you do wanna add a function to those buttons, you'd simply click on it and then you can scroll through all of these functions and add whatever function you want to that button. And again, if you don't see the function that you want on here, you can add and assign that function. There's really no end to how you can configure this remote. Uh, yes, you are limited on the remote to how many buttons it has, but all of these commands that you see here are gonna be listed in the remote. So for example, Let's say I click on my Anthem uh, device. I click on the button here. And then if I scroll through, all these functions are gonna be the functions that are listed in the app itself. So I can still select all of those functions even if I don't have enough buttons to configure that. You can still scroll through this and find those functions. So as you can see, it's very simple to add functions from your old remote or the original remote to the sofa baton. Even if the sofa baton does not have that function already programmed, you can easily learn uh, or teach this remote the functions from your old remote. But let's say you wanted to add an activity. So uh, we'll give you an idea of what these activities are. So once you go back to the home screen on your Sofa Baton app on the bottom, you'll see activities. So you'll wanna click on that. And as you can see, I've already created one called Movies and Video. So for example, um, to give you an idea of what activities are, I have the Panasonic UV820, which I can watch movies on. I have my ZDU that I can watch movies on. And I can also stream from the NVIDIA Shield to watch movies on. So 
depending on which device I want to use, I could create different activities for watching movies. Let's say I know that there's a movie on Netflix that I want to watch. So I'm going to want to watch that on my NVIDIA. So I'm going to activate the movies NVIDIA. Or let's say I bought a new Blu-ray and I want to watch the Blu-ray on my Panasonic uh, UV820. I could create another activity called Movies Panasonic. And when I activated that activity, then I'm going to be able to use that function for the Panasonic and same thing for the ZDU. So let's um, simulate creating an activity for my Panasonic UV820. So we're just going to want to hit the plus sign in the top right hand corner. And then you're going to want to select which devices that are going to be involved in this activity. So let's say you wanted your TV to turn on, you wanted the uh, Panasonic Blu-ray play to turn on, as well as my Anthem AVM receiver. I don't have my TV program in here, so we won't be using the TV, but I will select the Anthem and I'll select my Panasonic. And then I'm going to hit next. And then it's going to ask you, select the input source for this activity. So the Anthem is going to want to know which input it's going to use to activate this. So we're going to want to use the Blu-ray player, which is my Panasonic. So I'm going to select Blu-ray player. And then the Panasonic is the source. So obviously we're not going to want to change that. And it says right on the right there, no need to switch the input. And then we hit next. So once you select this activity, it's asking you which devices you want to power on when you activate this activity. So it has the Anthem as turning on and the Panasonic as off but we actually want to select the Panasonic as turning on as well. So as soon as we activate this activity, it's going to turn on my Anthem, which is connected to my amplifiers through a trigger switch or a trigger cable. So that's going to activate my Anthem, which turns on my amplifiers. And the sofa baton is also going to turn on my Panasonic UV820. So then we're going to want to hit next. So now it's asking, select the device you want the remote volume buttons to control. So in this case, we want the volume to be controlled from the Anthem. So the volume buttons and the mute button on the sofa baton remote is going to directly control the Anthem, not the Panasonic UB820 if it did have a volume control. So we're going to hit next because the Anthem is already selected. And then it's going to ask you select the device you want the other remote buttons to control besides the volume. So with the Anthem, we only want to be able to control the volume. But as far as fast forwarding, pausing, stopping, that's all going to be done on the Panasonic. So all the other buttons are going to be the Panasonic. So then you're going to select next because the Panasonic is already selected. And then you're going to want to choose an icon. So in this case, let's choose this little picture again. And then you're going to want to name it. So this is going to be called Movies Panasonic. So I know that if I want to watch a Blu-ray, this is the activity that I'm going to select. And then I'm going to hit complete. And you're going to give it a little time to update the hub. And then of course the hub is going to sync with the remote. And then as soon as you hit that activity, it's going to turn on the Panasonic. It's going to turn on the Anthem. And then I'm going to be able to control the Panasonic with all the buttons except for the volume. And the volume is going to control the Anthem. So essentially what you're doing is you're combining the remotes uh, into one function. So you're going to have to switch the device on the sofa baton each time you want to control a different device. With these activities, this is a way for you to not have to do that. Once you've triggered this activity, you're going to have the option of controlling the volume to the Anthem and all the other buttons are going to control the Panasonic without switching the device. But as you can see, it's updated my list of activities here and it's going to do the same on the remote, but it's still syncing. But once it's synced, I'm going to be able to go to my activities from the remote and select it from there, or I can be able to select it on my phone or my tablet as well. So once you've selected the activity, if you want to program a macro, which allows you to um, trigger certain functions or several functions with the press of one button, uh, you can go to key favorites, and then you can see on the bottom here, add macros. So in this case, I've already created a power macro uh, so if I wanted to edit or repair that, you can see here that it's going to power off the Panasonic and power off the Anthem by pressing that one button. So when I go to the remote, once I've selected that activity, you're going to have a list of your macros in that activity itself. You can see, I don't know if you can see on the remote, but it shows that power macro that I designed on there. So you can see that there's pretty much no limit to what you can program this, with this remote. You can program activities, you can program macros within those activities. So there's not going to be too much more functionality you're going to need uh, besides this remote right here to program pretty much whatever you have uh, within reason, of course. Now, one thing I want to point out is if you already have the app connected on your phone and then you're trying to connect to the hub on your tablet. So I don't think you can have more than one device connected to the hub at one time. So I have to close the Sofa Baton app on my phone to open it up on my tablet. And then I select the hub and then it's going to open the hub here and, and list all of my devices. So now essentially this is my remote 
And the reason I did that is because it's got such a big screen, the buttons are nice and big, so it's very easy to control what I wanna control. I can scroll through and click on my activities and activate whatever activity I want. I can switch to my devices very quickly just by just hitting the devices, and then I have my list of devices, and I can select that. Like I said, activities, boom, it's right there. I select the activity I wanna do. If I wanna control a different device while I have an activity activated, I can just go to my devices here and power on my EverSolo, uh, streamer if I want to or my ever solo DAC but this is uh, absolutely a game changer for me um, this is why I truly really do like this remote and that's why I changed my tune on it so I wasn't really a huge proponent of universal remotes until I got this one and guys it is a game changer it truly is so if you guys do want to control your home theater with a tablet or even just your phone the sofa baton X1S is a fantastic thing to do that. Now, the one downfall or the one thing that I would like to see them change is just add an IR blaster directly to the remote. The reason I say that is because in not in all cases, in mine particular, the hub is not gonna always have line of sight to all of your devices. So in my case, it doesn't have line of sight to my TV. So if this remote had an IR blaster, that problem is instantly solved because I could just turn my TV on with the remote itself, aim it at the TV and turn it on. Uh, it's almost perfect the way it is. Uh, it does have a long battery life and everything that you can charge it on the USB-C. But if they would just add that IR blaster on the front, it would be almost perfect. So if you guys are interested in this remote, I'll drop links down in the description below. Or if you're interested in checking out the U2 remote, which is the IR blaster version of the Sofa Baton remote, I'll drop that down in the description as well. Make sure you stay tuned for all my future videos. To do that, you're gonna to need to subscribe and tick that bell icon if you do. Please take just one short second to hit that like button if you did find this video helpful. Remember to enjoy your systems, even if you are buried in remotes. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.